Good morning, Saints. Good morning. What do you want to do here today on this beautiful Saturday morning? 28 degrees. Hey, man, it's winter. Almost. I want to continue on this series on faith. And it's not really a series per se, but what we are doing is going through the Word of God. And when faith pops up, we're going to expound on it. And we saw that the first place it popped up was in uh, the Old Testament and then again in the Prophets. And what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the New Testament to see what Jesus has said about it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this goodness that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for all your mercy and all your loving kindness and all your patience that you have had with us. We thank you for <clears throat> you sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be a sacrifice and die for our sins so that we could be forgiven. We thank you for by his stripes that we are healed. We pray, Heavenly Father, and ask you today that you will give us more revelation and more understanding about faith and what we need to do so that we can stay in faith and not slip in and out of faith. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Just started out a few weeks back in uh, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, the 20th verse where we start, where we saw faith mentioned for one of the first times in the Old Testament. It said in uh, Deuteronomy 20, 32, verse 20, he said, And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be, for they are a perverse generation children of whom is no faith. And um, Jesus said something like that himself. When uh, this was in Mark the fourth chapter, when he uh, was in the boat, amen. Maybe we should just take a look at that. Mark the fourth chapter, because it's always good to put your eyes on the Word of God. That way you'll know that what I'm saying is what God is saying. It says here in Mark the 4th chapter, the 35th verse. It says, On the same day, when evening was come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him alone in the boat as he was, and other little boats also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cover. <laughs> you see that Jesus don't worry about nothing. If, you know, if you want to say that somebody is cool, you need to look at Jesus because he stays cool and calm and collect all the time. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? See, there you go. So, when you're fearful, you have no faith. And this is similar to what happened to the children um, that came out of Egypt. They were so fearful that they didn't have no faith even though they saw everything that God had done and that can happen to you today if you let fear come on you you don't have no faith in God we looked at last week uh, live by his faith 
See, when you start living by his faith, it stays in your heart and mind at all times, no matter what the circumstances of may arise. With this case with them in the storm, sure, we've been in many storms too, maybe not on a, a ship or a boat, but regardless of what circumstances arise in your life, you got to live by faith. And that's what we talked about last week. Uh, Habakkuk 2 4 says, Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So we, we see this today in the time that we live in. There is a lot of proud people. And um, Jesus also gives us an example in the 18th chapter of Luke about. Somebody exalting themselves. Let's take a look at that. Because this is faith class. And what we do, if you write down these scriptures and you go back and go over them and over them again, you'll see that your faith will start increasing. This is uh, Luke, the 18th chapter we're going to look at. And what Jesus is talking about here is about a tax collector. Tax collectors were looked down on in the Old Testament, even during Jesus' time. They were looked at as sinners. It says in the ninth verse of this 18th chapter, it says, Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Do we have people like that today? Yes, we do. They trust in their self and despise others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus to himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus says here, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exhausts himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. That's why when we come over here, we pray and we thank God. Because we are not doing this on our own power. What God has done for us, he has put his Holy Spirit in us. Amen. And his Holy Spirit leads us through the week from faith to faith. Whatever circumstances may arise in our life, what the Holy Spirit does is lead us into all truth. And he even tells us things about the future that we don't even know about. Amen. And once you are living from faith to faith, in uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, it says, this is 1038, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So we don't want to be walking in faith one day and then the next day drawn back. Amen. We want to walk in faith all the time. Now this week, we went over quite extensively about children who have no faith and live by his faith already. What we want to look at today is little faith. Little faith. And where we found that at was in Matthew the sixth chapter. Take a look at Matthew the sixth chapter here. 
Now, in this sixth chapter, what Jesus is talking about, this is actually, uh, they call it the Sermon on the Mount, part of the, when he was uh, talking to them, the multitudes on the mountain. Amen. It says, and he then opened his mouth and taught them saying, so Jesus is teaching us today. Amen. Amen. And in the sixth chapter, he taught them, uh, do good to please God. That's the first thing he's talking about. Then he gave them a model prayer. So if you don't know how to pray, you can use this model prayer as a starting point in your Christian walk. Because a lot of saints, they don't know how to pray. They, they've been in the world so long, and then once they come to Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus has got it all set up, and he's got even a model prayer for you here that you can use, and then once you start living by faith, from faith to faith, what happens, the Holy Spirit guides and leads you into all truth. So that when you're praying to the Father in Jesus Christ's name, you're not just asking him for stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. You are thanking him. Thank you. you are thanking him. Mm -hmm. And then you make your predictions or uh, what you are asking about. And a lot of times you're not asking for anything, you're asking about a situation going on in your life. And what the Holy Spirit will bring right out of your spirit to your mind, what's going on, what's wrong, Amen. and how to straighten it up. Amen. He also talks about, in this sixth chapter, fasting to be seen only by God. When he tells you how to fast. He also tells you uh, about laying up treasures in heaven. There's nothing wrong with having a 401k or some kind of savings account. But he said, if, if you really want to be blessed, you got to lay up treasures in heaven. Amen. Then he talks about the lamp of the body. The lamp of the body. What is the lamp of the body? Let's just look here in the 22nd verse. It says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Amen. So, he's saying, if you your, keep your eye on what is good, Amen. your whole body will be good. But he says here, but if your eye is bad, mm. your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So if you got your eyes on other things other than what God wants you to have more, you could be walking in darkness and not even know it. And he also goes about, you cannot serve God in riches. I mean, it's all right to have money. God, God wants you to have some money. You don't be prosperous if you. But He don't want you to worship money. Mm -hmm. He wants you to worship Him, from where the money comes from. But He's your source. Mm -hmm. And He talks about no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mamma. The mamma is money. You can't serve them both. And we see this in a lot of Christian circles is the main thing on their mind is money. There's nothing wrong with having money. I mean, God provides everything for us over here. He provides this recording studio. He provides us with a, a house, with furniture, with food, with clothing, and all of that. God is our source. And this leads us right to where we want to be today. Do not worry. Do you know that worry is a sin? I do. A lot of people don't know that. I know they don't. Now he says here in uh, the sixth verse, 
I mean the 30th verse of this 6th chapter, he says, Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Amen. So he's talking to us. Yes. He's saying that we have little faith. Well, why is he saying that? Let's go back to the 25th verse. It says here in the 25th verse, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you shall, will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Do are you not more value than they? Are we more valuable than the birds? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. We're more valuable than the birds. Mm -hmm. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your statues? So right away, in the first three verses there, you see worry. Why, man? Worry? He said, stop worrying. Well, Brother Carter, you don't know how it is. I, 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 I'm worried about I'm going to get laid off at work, or I'm worried about that they're going to close up this job. I mean, during this season that we're living right now, during Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, a lot of people are worrying about what kind of clothes they're going to get for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. What kind of food they're going to have for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And during Christmas, they're worried about whether they're going to be able to, you know, get clothes for their kids and toys and whatever their kids are requesting. And plus, they're worried about the food that they're going to, you know, where is that coming from? And this is what God don't want you to do this holiday season is worry. That's right. Yeah, he says, stop worrying. Stop. stop worrying. Well, let's look at where is this worrying coming from. Look at me uh, in Luke, the 12th chapter. Let's look at a few verses out of Luke, the 12th chapter. Because we really need to get a handle on this. Because uh, it's a sin. And it says in James, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So if we know not to worry, we need to, we really need to, to listen to Jesus and stop worrying about, you know, our what we're going to put on our body or what we're going to eat. Amen? Amen? Now in Luke, the 12th chapter here, it's pretty similar to what Jesus is saying over here, but Luke brings out something over here that I was looking at. Um, this is actually Luke, the 12th chapter. The fourth verse. He says here, Jesus is teaching the fear of God. That's what he's teaching about here. And he says, And I say to you, my friend, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So he's telling us something that worry actually stems from fear. That's where worry comes from. 
Worry is a, a, a part of fear that people don't even realize that they have by worrying. And we know that if you got fear, we saw that in Mark the fourth chapter, that if you have fear, Jesus said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So he said, if you got fear in your life, you don't have no faith. But he said, if you have worry in your life, you have little faith. Amen. Just a little bit. And he's saying here, do not worry. Now Hebrews 5, uh, I mean Hebrews 13 tells us something. The 13th chapter of Hebrews, the 5th verse, it says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may say boldly, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. And that's where a lot of worry is coming in because your source is with, with some man. Amen. That's where you, you figure that you, you know, you're going to get this money from from some man, what do you mean some man? Well, most of us in the United States are employed by the government, but we don't know that. Right, they don't know. <laughs> they, they say, well, I don't work for no government uh, yeah, I person. I don't work for no veterans department or no government office. All people in the United States are employed by this government. That's where all the source of money comes from to different corporations and, and different businesses and all of this. It, it, the source, the main source is the government. Why do you say that? Because when you really trace out these large corporations, these CEOs are hired by a board. And people on that board are people in Congress and senators mm -hmm. and different other places in the government. They all got a hand. <laughs> they all got a hand in it all together. <laughs> so he said, don't be afraid of what man going to do to you. Don't worry. He said, if you just be content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the problem. We are not content with what things we have. You know, I could be out there looking for a bigger house and, and, and you know, uh, newer suits and newer clothes and all of that, but that is not what's on my mind. My mind is to feed the sheep, the word of God. Now, in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says that we're supposed to cast all our cares upon him, for he cares for us. Now, go with that with me to Mark 6, chapter. 1 Peter 5, 7. Go back to Matthew, the 6th chapter. Let's look at this 28th and 29th verse. He says... So why do you worry about clothing? That's something that we all need to ask ourselves. Why do we really worry about clothing? I mean, you can get clothes anywhere. I mean, I mean about what people think about them. That's a lot of people feel that they have to have designer name clothes. Amen? And all you're doing is paying for something that's going to wear out just as quick as some, some clothes that you buy from Walmart or anywhere else. They're just clothes. But they worry about staying in fashion. They worry about what people say about them. That's what they worry about. So they're worried about men. Right. And we just told them that you shouldn't fear what man can do to you. Amen. You can't fear what man is saying. You sure can't worry about it. He's saying, 
Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet, I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Hmm. Now in Luke, the 22nd chapter, the 35th verse, this is Jesus talking to his disciples when they had, when he sent them out to kill people and preach about the kingdom of God. And he said to them in his 35th verse, he said, and he said to them, when I sent you out without money bag, knapsack, and sandals, did you lack anything? So they said nothing. See, if you're doing what the Lord tells you to do, you will not lack nothing. Not, not a thing. Not a thing. Now, clothing, he, he mentioned Solomon. If you ever studied about Solomon, whoo, I mean, he would have it going on. It tells you about it in 1 Kings, the 10th chapter, that even the, key, the queen of Sheba came down there because she had heard about all this. Mm -hmm. She wanted to see it. And she wanted to see it for herself. Mm -hmm. Now you pick this up in the fifth verse that says, the food on his table and the seating of his servants and the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearer and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more splendid spirit left in her when she saw all this. So when, this is First Kings, the 10th chapter. When she saw all of what Solomon said, and he answered all her questions and everything, because you know Solomon had a lot of wisdom. God gave him. And he was most wise. And not only did he give him wisdom, he gave him prosperity. He gave him things that he didn't ask for. And when she saw this, it says, there was no more spirit in her. It just overwhelmed her. But what Jesus is saying, he's saying, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed like one of these. He's talking about the flowers that grow out of the field. Now when you look at the 30th verse, this is where we want to be. Where are you at now? Luke 6.30. Because what we're doing is going to this section in Luke, the sixth chapter, about worry. He said, us do not worry. Now, right away, he has mentioned this about worrying three times. And when we look at the 6th, the 30th verse, Matthew 6, 30, he says, Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much clothe you, O you of little faith? Now, he's talking to us. Because we're the one worried about everything. We're worried about, you know, our clothes, and uh, we worry about our food and all of this, and uh, you know, we worry about shelter, we worry about, you know, are we going to have transportation, we worry about, is, are our kids going to be safe? You can, you can worry, 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 and what he's saying, when you do this, it, it causes you to have little faith in God. Amen? I'm back in Matthew 6.30 says okay. that. Now, you keep your finger there in Matthew 6, chapter, because we're going to go back there again. But right now, what we want to do, here's what Isaiah the prophet said in Isaiah 46. He said, the voice said, cry out, 
And he said, What should I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the loveliness is like flowers, like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. So he's telling us we need to get our eyes on the word of God. Because he said the lamp of the body is the eye. Right? Right. Now, there is a, a not a uh, part in here in Matthew where Jesus talks about little faith. In the eighth chapter of Matthew, this is another time about they were out there on the sea. Matthew 8, 23 tells us, it says, Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly there was, there, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. So this is the same thing that Jesus was talking about when he said they had no faith. But in Matthew he says, Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, and saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful, O you of little faith? So over here in Matthew he says little faith. So is little faith like no faith? Well, I get to my, this is what I believe by reading all these translations and all the different accounts written in these four Gospels about faith, little faith, great faith, no faith. When you let fear overwhelm or worry take possession of your every thought, you don't have no faith. They had little faith because at least they knew to go to the Lord when they had a problem. There you See, go. some people don't have no faith and they go to everything in the world. That is the wrong way of looking at it. But if you have little faith, at least you get that. You at least you know to go to the Lord. Enough to get on your knees and pray to God and say, God, do you see what's going on with me? Mm. And then he will talk to you. He will tell you. You got a little faith. Just trust me. I'm, not, I, I'm looking at everything. I was just waiting to see if you're going to turn to me. Well, in this case, he was asleep. He was asleep. But you know, I got no sleep. He don't sleep or some oh. slumber. Okay, go back with me to this uh, sixth chapter of Matthew. Well, at least they did have that much, you know. So, that's a good point. If you have little faith, that means that you know to go to Jesus for help. Right. And it also says that uh, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, that's that's a, a small amount. A so small amount. actually, when we looked in Mark the fourth chapter, the mm -hmm. same account, he said you have no faith, mm -hmm. but they went to Jesus too. Right. So if you have no faith, you need to be coming to Jesus and see, right. what, see what he said. Right. That's right. And right. if you have little faith. You need to come to Jesus right. and see what he said. And if you uh, are worried, mm -hmm. you need to come to Jesus and, and see why you are more so worried. Because when you start worrying, you know Satan is messing with your head. He's all in his mind. Because we don't have nothing to worry about. And worrying is a sin. It is. It's a sin. So and when we you need start to, to repent. Worry, you got to repent. From worrying. See, a lot of people don't think that worrying is a sin. It is. But I have heard even I ministers say and that a, a little me. worry is, is, is good for you. No, no it it's not. It can make you kill yourself. Worry is yourself. not good for you at yeah, all. It's not good. It causes you to get sick. Uh, 
maybe cause you to have a heart attack. Well, listen, look here again in Matthew the sixth chapter. It the proof that you verse. lose focus by worrying. By worrying, because you focus on the problem. But your focus is on the, the either your clothes or, or your body. Right. What you gonna eat? Or food somebody or, or else. something else. You worried about something. Right. It says here in six thirty one of Matthew. Therefore, do not worry. Right. Says it again. Right. It's terrible. We well, really need to get a handle on this. Yes. Please. I mean, it's if God terrible. tells you do not worry, and He's already here, we see that He has told us one, two, three, four times already. It's, it's well, all we over. really need to. Get, if, I mean, God tells us something once, we need to pay attention. Right. But if He's telling us something here three or four times, right. We really need to get a handle on this. Because when we were and see, we don't pay we don't pay anything that the Holy Spirit is telling us attention. We're so distracted over what we worry about, we fail to hear and listen carefully, and it can cause your life to get destroyed. Because you're not paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is right, saying. Right, it causes you to lack prosperity and good health and everything. So he says in this 31st verse. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what should we eat? He said, don't worry about that. Or what should we drink? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. Or what should we wear? Don't worry about that. Right, things. and people are worried about it. They're worried about they them have, big time. I have people approaching me now. What are we going to do? The water going to run out. You know, they already worried about there's no going to be no water. Well, they're worried because... What the, the government is, is telling people yeah. that we are in a recession, mm -hmm. but due to after these uh, elections that we just had, we see that more people are changing their, the guard. I'll put it like that. The guard is being changed. And a lot of people, new people that are coming into as senators and congressmen they're saying that we're not going to give all this money to uh, to the Ukraine war anymore. All these billions of dollars that we've been financing this war in Ukraine, that we need to take that money and do something over here. So things will change, and he's telling us, therefore, do not worry, saying, what should we eat? What should we drink? Or what should we wear? In verse 32, he says, for after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. Is that true? Yeah, you know what we need. He wants if you, to when you're studying the Word of God, you see that they talk a lot about the Jews and the Gentiles. But when you get to First Corinthians, he says that we're not supposed to give no offense to the Jews or the Gentiles or to the church. Yeah. But the Gentiles are the world. Mm -hmm. They are the world because that's what they seek after. Right. They're seeking after this stuff and they're not seeking the Lord. Now in Psalms 37.3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land, and feed on his faithfulness. That's what we're supposed to be feeding on. Let me see, 37 2. This is Psalms 37, verse 3. He says that we're supposed to feed on his faithfulness. So if God knows what we have need of, amen, it says, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He knows this. Psalm 55, verse 26. Two says, cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Ephesians 4.17 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, and the futility of their mind. See, the Gentiles are not like 
somebody that's in the church. Somebody in the church, they're led by the Spirit. Amen. Now, Gentiles are led by their mind. And they invest billions of dollars to get educated because they look at it, the more education you have, the higher you are up on the status quo. Well, you just check it out for yourself. Anybody who gets elected or anybody who uh, runs for office, they have been to Harvard. <laughs> Some of them have got doctors and PhDs. Well, that's true because that's the way they uh, pay us in the system. We have a higher the higher degree, degree you get, the more you money. Get more money. When you go in as an entry, if you have an associate degree, you get paid less than someone with a bachelor or a master's. You got a PhD, you get paid much more. So in Ephesians it says that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. So God is telling us, you know, stop doing this. It's all right to get an education, but he's saying, don't let that be the main point. Now, in Luke, the 11th chapter, tells us something, too. This is um, one of the chapters that Jesus talks about the model prayer, too. He says in the 11th verse, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? You, if you then been evil, he's talking to us, right? know how to give good gifts to our children how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask them? That's what, what, what you got to realize. That when, see, when you become a child of God, what happens to you? Your spirit becomes brand new. Now, everybody on earth has a spirit. Some of them, their spirit hasn't been renewed from above. Amen? Amen. So they walk in the futility of their mind. They're, they are mind and body led. Uh, a Christian knows that you, we are a spirit. Amen. We possess a soul and we live in this body. Mm -hmm. And so we are spirit led. Spirit -led. We listen to what the spirit is telling our spirit. And whatever's going through our mind or whatever our body or our my eyes are seeing on TV and what our ears are hearing or, and all of that, our five physical senses, we're not led by the body. Mm -hmm. We're led by the spirit. And by being led by the spirit, we're getting our direction straight from God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But when you get the worrying and get the uh, fearful, that interferes with, with you and it can cause you to be distracted. That's why God don't want us to Well, let's uh, look back here at he don't want us Matthew, 33rd verse. A lot of people know this verse. It says, but first, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Mm -hmm. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. So he's saying we're supposed to seek God's kingdom. Amen. And all these things to be added unto mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. That's the key. It is. It is. Of not worrying. See, most people they don't want to seek the kingdom of God. A lot of people they know that verse about you know seek but first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But what that means is that when you're seeking the kingdom of God, because Jesus talks about this in this sixth chapter, yes, that you about laying up treasures in heaven. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, what is he talking about? He's talking about that you're supposed to bring something to God. Right. You're supposed to sow uh -huh. so that you can reap. 
If you're not given unto God, God zero from zero is zero. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And He's saying that you can't serve God and money. Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision that right. you're going to seek God with what they. And then Colossians, the uh, third chapter, um, that first verse it, it has in there: Keep seeking things that are above, like you said. Keep seeking things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, and that's what He wants us to do. Be seeking heavenly things like you said. We're going to pick back up on this next week. Mm -hmm. But the answer to not worrying is that 33rd verse. Mm -hmm. As he says, but, but yeah. Seek first the kingdom of God and That's His right. righteousness, That's and right. all these things will be added to you. That's how you get all these things. Right, right. From through God. It is. It's not through no man, it's through God. Because they don't know. Well, thank you. What they say, you need some mirror grass. <laughs> it's going to wither and 